This video describes the magnetic torque experiment for the Intermediate Lab, spring of 20, 2017. The learning outcomes for this lab are to demonstrate the magnetic torque on a magnetic dipole and to apply principles of harmonic motion, precession, and other things in order to analyze magnetic torque and magnetic dipoles. The lab objectives are very straightforward. They are to determine the magnetic moment of a magnetic disk in three different ways, or more if you have time. First, by balancing gravitational torque. Second, through measuring harmonic oscillations of uh, an object. And third, through measuring the magnetic force in a field gradient. So the basic physics we need to remember is that a magnetic dipole in a magnetic field will experience a torque. Magnetic dipole can be drawn as here on the right, where you've got a current loop that creates a magnetic dipole. With the right hand rule, you get the direction of the magnetic dipole pointing upwards. And this is the primary physics for this experiment. Um, the, the applications we're going to see, I'm going to run through very quickly, um, all apply this, this concept. So right now I'll give a brief description of each of the ways to measure the magnetic moment and then the experiment and setup video will be a bit longer. The lab instructions also available to you have much more information than usual about the actual experiment and the ways to go about doing it. First we'll find the magnetic moment through the use of gravitational torque. We'll determine the ball's magnetic moment by balancing the gravitational torque and magnetic torque. The experiment will look something like this, where the, the magnetic torque exerted on this ball is balanced by the gravitational torque exerted on this rod. The expression we're dealing with says that mu cross b, or the torque on the magnetic moment, is equal to r cross f, or r cross mg in this case. The second technique is to find the magnetic moment using a harmonic oscillations. And what we're going to do is have our little cue ball here just oscillate back and forth. Um, it acts like a physical pendulum in this field. And since the, uh, the torque is equal to I alpha, uh, and the torque on this particular magnetic moment is equal to mu cross B or minus mu B times theta using the small angle approximation. We put that together, as you do in mechanics many, many times, and we get minus mu b theta equals i d squared theta dt squared. Now using that, we can find the angular, um, the angular uh, frequency of the object, and hence the period. And so the period becomes t squared equals 4 pi squared i over mu times 1 over b. And that is the expression we'll use in order to find the magnetic moment. In this case, we can find period and magnetic field um, and go from there. The third technique is actually not harmonic oscillation. The third technique is to balance the, the magnetic force on a magnetic dipole and a field gradient with another magnetic force or with another force. What we're going to do is find the gradient necessary to balance a gravitational force, gravitational force at the right-hand side, um, and the magnetic force equal to mu times dB dt. And so we will adjust dB dt and balance it with F, or vice versa, in order to find mu. The equipment details that are important to know can be found in the manual and also here the magnetic field is 1.36 times 10 to the minus 3 tesla per amps. In other words, if you multiply that by current, you'll have a conversion factor for the magnetic field. And similarly, the gradient of the magnetic field, dBdz, equals 1.69 times 10 to the minus 2 tesla per amp meters. So if we multiply this by amps, by the current, we get Tesla per meter. I'm going to follow along here to see instructions on each step of the experiment. 
this video is explaining the different parts of doing the magnetic torque experiment. There are a lot of uh, pieces and so it'll be better just to show you how to put them together and what you should expect to see. So the main components are this apparatus which has uh, uh, coils of wire which will create our magnetic field and it has a holder with a little air jet. The, the uh, power and etc. is here. So our switches are over here and then we play with things over here. So first what we need to do is just turn it on and the power switch is in the back. You'll see a little red light on. The first experiment that we're going to do is balance a magnetic torque base with a gravitational torque. So this cue ball has an internal, has its own little magnetic disc in it that creates a dipole moment. So I'm going to start by just putting this in the little ball there. And if I turn on the air, the little cue ball will now float freely and will rotate freely or move however you like. So I'm going to the part with balancing the magnetic torque with gravitational torque is to insert this little metal rod. It's got a plastic disc that you can move. It slides back and forth. And I'll put this back in. You see that it, the gravitational torque is weighing it down, but if I turn up the magnetic field, what will happen is the magnetic torque will start to counter the gravitational torque. And at some particular magnetic torque, it will actually pull that little object up. So your first job, the first experiment, is to balance the gravitational torque with the magnetic torque. And it will take a little bit of fiddling. You may have to position, hold it a little bit with your hand, keep it from spinning around, but you'll, you'll get there. Um, there are things you're going to measure for this one. You need to know the gravitational torque, so you're going to measure the position of the little plastic rod, things like that. All right, so that's the first way we're going to find the magnetic moment or the magnetic dipole. The second way is to actually watch the thing move, to watch it precess freely under a magnetic torque. So we'll pull this out, put it back in our little collection here. And what we have, again, if we have no magnetic field, the thing just lies down, just points downward. But when we start putting a magnetic field on it, and here I'll put a magnetic field of about one amp, the object will kind of bounce back and forth because it has a restoring torque due to the magnetic dipole wanting to line up with the magnetic field. So we're going to displace it a little bit and just watch it go back and forth, and we'll count those, measure the period for different magnetic fields or different currents. And knowing the relationship between the period, the magnetic moment, and the magnetic field, we can find the uh, magnetic moment of this. So that's the second technique. Our third technique involves a little bit different physics, a little bit different stuff going on with the magnetic field. I'm going to turn the air off. And we're still going to use our, our cue ball, but now instead of a uniform magnetic field, we're going to use the field gradient. So we'll turn the field gradient on. Now what we want to do is we want to balance the gravitational force in a field gradient with a magnetic force, and we'll do that by setting up this little magnetic force balance. So I'm going to carefully position the magnetic force balance on its little holder here, and I'll hang the cue ball on the other end. By simply pushing the cue ball in. All right, well, the cue ball is heavier than that. Fine. So in order to make our 
mass, our object here heavier. We're going to add some little ball bearings, make that, that hanging mass heavier. And eventually it will pull the cue ball up. At that point, if we turn on a magnetic gradient, you will actually see the bar balance. I don't want to spoil the, the excitement by showing you now, but you'll see the, the two forces actually balance each other by turning up the field gradient. So your objective in this portion is to have different masses added to the little hanging mass and then change the field gradient so that you balance the force and this is approximately level. Having, being able to compare those two will give you yet a third measurement of the magnetic torque. And at that point, you're ready to compare your three measurements and to use those to, uh, to understand the interactions between magnetic torque and, uh, and gravitational torque and magnetic field, etc. So that's all for this one. The pre-lab questions are fairly straightforward. Let's just familiarize ourselves with the magnetic field and the torque on a magnetic dipole. So draw a small magnetic dipole in a magnetic field pointed in the positive y direction or up the page and sketch the torque that would be exerted on it at various angles. Um, and also review the experiment notes that are in the lab instructions. Getting started is the usual, including, again, reviewing the experiment notes, which give more detail. And that's it.